Okay, gravitational potential energy. Yet another formula, you have no choice but to learn. Okay, let's start off with, first of all, what the formula is. So, it goes EP equals M times G times H. Now, what the heck does that mean? Okay, first thing, EP stands for gravitational potential probably guess the last word energy and like always with energy the units are joules M stands for take a guess mass which is measured in kilograms G stands for something slightly different which is gravitational field strength which we'll look at in a little bit more detail in a minute gravitational field strength and the units for that is newtons per kilogram and then the final one is height and you should already know in physics when we're using like distances or any sort of lengths we usually like to stick to meters okay now what does gravitational potential energy means what does it what does it mean it means it's the energy that any any object has that is at a given at a particular height so it's not on the ground so we'll give you an example so we've got a ball and I'm gonna raise this ball from here up to this shelf. So I'm gonna move it up here onto this shelf. Now for me to move that ball, I have done work. Work is done. And you may or may or not know, in physics that term just simply means energy is transferred. So I've transferred energy because I've moved the ball from here to here. So if I've transferred energy, I've transferred energy to what? I've transferred energy to the ball. That ball now has gravitational potential energy because I've moved it from the ground onto here. That's what we call gravitational potential energy. So what if, for example, I had a larger ball? So this one's a little bit bigger. And I move that ball over here. So I've done exactly the same thing. Does that ball have also have GPE? Yeah, it does because I moved it to a moved it higher. But it also has more GPE because the bigger ball will have more mass. Therefore, it has more gravitational potential energy. The final thing that can affect gravitational potential energy is simply just how high I put it. So I have a bigger shelf and I have a gigantic ball. If I move that over here that's now going to have loads of gravitational potential energy because I moved it a lot higher and the mass is also large and this all links to the formula because how do you calculate gravitational potential energy you take the mass you times the height and then you also tell about something called gravitational field strength now what does that mean it's basically the strength of gravity so on our planet our gravitational field strength is around 10 and in an exam they usually tell you but I'd probably say it's worthwhile remembering the earth the Earth has a gravitational field strength of two, 10, 10 Newton kilograms. For If this was the Moon, for example, the Moon would have a gravitational field strength of around 1.6. It has a lower gravitational field strength because gravity is less on the Moon, because the Moon has less mass, which means it's smaller, therefore less gravity. So that is just stands for the strength of gravity on where you are, and usually that's going to be on Earth. Okay, let's try some examples. A roller coaster car has a mass of 400 kilograms and has a height of 20 meters. So I've got a roller coaster, and my roller coaster has made it up to a height of 20 meters. Calculate the gravitational potential energy of the roller coaster at the top of the track. Assume G is 10 newtons per kilogram. So this is on Earth, it's not on Jupiter or Saturn or wherever else it might be. First thing I would do is, is to write it all down. So, write down the formula, gravitational potential energy, mass, times gravitational field strength, times the height. Okay, so let's put the numbers in. I've been given mass, which is 400 kilograms. That's all good because in kilograms, I'm fine with that. I've also been given the height, which is 20 meters. And I've also been given the gravitational field strength, which is 10. So this one is pretty straightforward because to work out gravitational potential energy, I times the mass times by the strength of gravity 
times the height. And when you put this number into a calculator, so you take 400 times 10 times 20, I get an answer of 80,000 joules. So that's how much energy that roller coaster has 20 meters above the ground with a mass of 400 kilograms. Let's try another one. A skydiver has 4.5 times 10 to the 6 joules of gravitational potential energy. Now remember, that is standard form. So all that is, is that the, that decimal point, for the full number, that decimal point is moved along six places. Yeah, but you can keep it like that and make sure you understand how to put that into your calculator. Why is this useful? Because sometimes in maths or in physics, you're going to use numbers that are gigantic. That don't necessarily work when you put them into a calculator. They might not even just they might not even fit in the calculator. So actually, standard form just allows you to write things down a lot, lot simpler. So I've been given grams of gravitational potential energy. The skydiver has a mass of 75 kilograms. Again, that's kilograms, so that's fine. I've also been told the gravitational field strength, which is 10. Calculate the height of the skydiver. Okay, let's write down the formula first. EP equals mass times gravitational field strength times the height. So what have I been given? I've been given the mass, 75 kilograms. I've also been given G, which is 10. Have I been given the height? No, but I have been given this one, times 10 to the six. Now this is hard because now you've been asked to work out this. So now you need to be able to rearrange the formula. So let's rearrange it first. So I basically want to work out H. That means I want the, my formula to equal to H, but at the moment it equals M, G, and H. So let's get, get rid of M and G. How can I get rid of M and G? Is I divide by M and G, because M cancels out from M, G cancels out G. So EP equals H. However, whatever I do on this side, I must also do on this side. So how do you work out height? Height is gravitational potential energy divided by the mass times the strength times gravitational field strength. So it should be 4.5 times 10 to the 6 divided by 75 kilograms times 10. So basically divide by 750. And you should get an answer of, in fact, let's, we'll do this together. So 4.5 times 10 to the 6 divided by 750. So 4.5 to the 6 divided by 750. And I get an answer of 6,000 meters. So my answer is 6,000 meters meters and a lot of the time it will make sense because it's a skydiver a skydiver isn't going to be five meters above the ground six thousand meters sounds about right last one a leaf falls 15 meters off a tree okay the leaf had 0 0.06 joules of gravitational potential energy before falling assume g is 10 so again it's on earth calculate the mass so let's write out the formula let's substitute our numbers in first so have I been given gravitational potential energy? I have, that is 0 0.06. I've also been given, no, have I been given the mass? No, I haven't. Gravitational field strength, I've been given that, that's 10. And I've been given the height, which is 15. But I've been asked to work out mass. So let's rearrange our formula. So I want mass by itself. So let's get rid of G and H. They cancel each other out. And whatever I do on that side, I must also do on this side. Yeah, so gravitational potential energy divided by gravitational field strength times the height will equal mass. So let's put the numbers in. 0 0.06 is my gravitational is my gravitational potential energy. I divide that by 10 times 15. So that should be 10 times 15 is a 150 so 0.06 divide by 150 let's put the numbers in 0 0.06 divided by 150 and I get 0 
point zero four. Zero point zero 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 four. Now there's a slight problem. Calculate the mass in grams. I work that number out. That no point no 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 four is in kilograms. How do I change kilograms to grams? Kilograms to grams is times in by a thousand. So if I times that number by a thousand. I end up with 0.4 grams. Okay, now there's, there's quite a bit there, but the key there was to understand that I wanted the answer in grams.